and next to it is Beit David, House of David. Now here you have the mention of the House of David in an Aramaic inscription dated to the second half of the 9th century BC, about, what, 150 years since the days of King David. Later on, the following year, in another season of excavation, we found two more pieces. And these two pieces link to the original one. And now we can even know the names of the kings. The Melech Israel, the king of Israel he's referring to here, is Jehoram. We have only two letters of name Ram, who is the son of Ahab. And then the king of the house of David is Ahaziahu, who is also mentioned in the Bible. The exciting thing is here that you have a historical a stealer referring to historical events of which the Bible speaks at great length. The archaeology of Jerusalem has revealed the beginning of Israelite habitation at the southern end of the Ophel. Down the Kidron Valley was discovered the Jebusite Wall by Kathleen Kenyon. Further on, Warren Shaft was discovered, and then David City surrounding that area. Further down, the Gihon Spring and Hezekiah's Water Tunnel. The city of David grew northward from the site of the Gihon Spring. The Bible tells us that David captured the city of Jebus by entering through a shaft in the rocks at the base of the wall. After David captured Jebus, he built his own fortress on the remains of the Canaanite settlement. All the remains from that period of David's citadel is this unique stepped structure. This is uh, the palace of Bethsaida that dates to the uh, 10th century BC. I am now standing in one of the guard rooms of the palace, or one of the service rooms of the palace. This palace uh, that was built at about the same time when uh, uh, David and Solomon reigned in Jerusalem was perhaps the prototype of, uh, of uh, the uh, palace of, of Solomon and perhaps also the palace of David. In 701 BC, the Bible tells us that the city of Lachish was destroyed by the Assyrian king Sennacherib. In the excavations of his palace at Nineveh, conducted last century, a 90-foot long relief of panels depicting that destruction was found. There we can see people led captive and the details of the terrible battle employing battering rams against the walls of the city. Excavations at Lachish should not only reveal physical evidence of the battle, but also a final letter written on broken pieces of pottery describing the last hours of the conflict. Next, the Assyrians came against Jerusalem. A chief concern was to protect the main water source of the Gihon Spring. King Hezekiah of Judah had constructed a water tunnel to bring water from outside the city to inside the city in case of siege. The Assyrians that came against the city, therefore, were unable to keep the people from their water because it was secretly being brought through this great tunnel. An inscription found at the beginning of the tunnel called the Siloam inscription indicated just how the workmen had brought this to pass and filled in for us some of the information that was only indicated by the Bible. It tells us that workmen began from either end, one from the pool of Siloam, the other from the area near the Gihon Spring. And by going almost 750 feet, met in the middle and connected the tunnel. Twenty years after the Assyrians exiled the northern kingdom of Israel, the Assyrians marched against Jerusalem. Assyrian documents tell us that they had King Hezekiah of Judah shut up like a bird in a cage. However, Jerusalem did not fall. Now, this broad wall is testimony to that biblical event. It was discovered uh, during the early 70s here in the middle of the Jewish quarter after uh, two years of excavations, uncovering remains of uh, later occupation levels, Roman, Byzantine. After we removed them, we uncovered this uh, amazing discovery, the broad wall, which is a wall from the end of the Old Testament times, dates to, uh, to the 8th century BCE. We identified it with the wall uh, built by King Hezekiah to protect his city against the coming of the Assyrian army that did come here in the year 701. The wall itself is a very massive wall. It was uh, amazing 
to realize that it, uh, it is actually one of the most massive fortifications ever built during the Old Testament times. King Hezekiah built this as a western perimeter all around the city, bringing field stones and stacking them hastily as a defense against the Assyrians. And yet Hezekiah did not depend only upon his own military resourcefulness. The Bible tells us that he prayed to God. He said, I look wistfully to the heights. O Lord, you are my security. And the answer came through the prophet Isaiah to Hezekiah. I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. The Bible records that during the night, an angel of the Lord came and struck the army of the Assyrians. 185,000 of that army were killed. As a result, General Sennacherib retreated back to Nineveh. Life in Jerusalem at the end of the Jewish monarchy has been revealed in tombs at the site of Ketafi Nome. We found out that uh, the upper chamber, most of which was quarried away, the roof of which is missing, the walls of which is, are missing, all the burial gifts and everything what uh, this uh, room contained is gone, but the repository remained unrobbed. Inside this one chamber of this uh, repository, we discovered more than 1,000 objects. Uh, among them, more than 360 intact and complete uh, pottery vessels, uh, around 120 objects made of silver, and uh, several uh, pieces of beautiful pieces of jewelry, earrings, uh, finger rings, uh, 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 pendants and uh, around 150 beads of different colors and materials made most of them of semi-precious stones and inside there was uh, also a, a student of mine at that time working uh, uh, Judith Headley uh, she was inside and called me over and showed me an object still in the ground uh, which looked like a cigarette butt uh, it was purplish grayish in color and it took us uh, three more years uh, of hesitations and partially destroying of the uh, destruction of the object uh, in order to unroll it. Uh, it was made of a, uh, uh, a foil or a plaque of uh, silver. When they were unrolled, uh, we found out that uh, they are covered with uh, delicately scratched uh, characters in the ancient Hebrew script. The uh, surprise was that uh, the first word to be uh, identified and deciphered was the name of the Lord. Uh, on both amulets we have a uh, text which is almost similar to uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 and on, uh, the text which is known as the priestly benediction, or the Lord bless thee and keep thee, uh, ending with... Uh, and grant you with peace. The uh, repository here included thus the earliest biblical verses that we own, which predate the famous uh, Dead Sea Scrolls by several centuries. And these are the only biblical verses that we own that date back still to the time of the Davidic dynasty, the time of, uh, uh, of the Judean monarchy, the time of the first temple period. After the death of Solomon, the monarchy split, and Jeroboam, uh, who established the northern kingdom of the ten tribes, uh, was afraid that the people uh, of Israel will go to Jerusalem to the temple and thus swear allegiance to the dynasty of David. So he decided to establish two central cult centers in the northern part of the country. One of them was Dan. And Adan, he said, the golden calf. But we did find the sanctuary, of which I'm convinced that this is the sanctuary which Jeroboam had built. And among the things that we found, we found this huge pitos, a huge jar with a snake decoration. On the remains of uh, Jeroboam's high place, Ahab, if we, we think it's Ahab, we have no evidence of that, but we think it's he, he built a very large high place, 19 by 19 uh, square meters. And from there, we found next to it this altar. And this, this horn was found in the rubble. It must have belonged to a very large horn. Uh, we've tried to figure out the relationship between 